please video. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, I had a frog in my throat. A frog? Could you please shut up? I want to show my viewers how I created this diorama. Okay, sure man, go ahead. Thank you. I started this Venom diorama that was sculpted by Paolo Olympio by printing the base on my CR-10S and Venom on my Elegu Saturn. I guess it's about one tenth scale, I just scaled Venom in a way that he fits on my build plate in one go. Then I started with the post-processing by gluing the lower base parts together with two-part epoxy, filled and fixed holes and gaps with milliput and then applied wood filler all over the base to get rid of the print lines. I also added a magnet to the left foot and base and a brass rod to the right foot because the stock keys were a bit too small. With cheap craft acrylics I base coated the base to see if the wood filler did its job to remove the print lines. After all the print lines were gone I used stonewall grey to paint the cement between the bricks. And I did a really sloppy and quick job here. With different kind of red tones I then blocked out the brick colors. Again, doing a pretty messy job, but that will all be covered up and toned down in a few seconds with the washes. For all the pipes sticking out of the walls, I used Parasite Brown as a base color and then put a bit of dark flesh tone over that with a very hard brush leaving uneven darker spots on top of the Parasite Brown. Then I took the Parasite Brown again to simulate rusty water running down the walls. Then I continued rusting up the parts with Parasite Brown and Dark Flesh Tone. For the bars and the large pipe along the side, I dry brushed gunmetal onto a black base color. The last step of blocking out the base colors was using earth for the dirt. And then it was time to make everything nasty with a wash, meaning a mix of water, tire black, earth and yellow olive. But that wasn't filthy enough, so the next round was black tire and water only. For the nasty sewer water I wanted to go for a greenish tone to have a contrast to all the bricks. I thought a brownish tone in the water as well would maybe make it look a bit too dull. So I started with Cayman Green as a base color. And since sewers probably don't always have the same water level I imitated that by washing the walls with Cayman Green as well. Then I switched over to Camouflage Green which is a bit lighter to increase the contrast a bit. I wanted to create the effect of depth in the water by painting the high spots with camouflage green and the low spots with cayman green. For that I didn't wait to let the camouflage green dry and worked wet in wet. I dipped my brush into water to blend together the two colors to have a smooth color transition. Then I did a wash with dark green followed by yellow olive on top of that to finish it. Next I used a cheap craft matte varnish and sealed the whole base. You can see after drying, it's not really matte, but I liked the satin look for the bricks for this setting more anyway. To give the water some shine again, I used green stuff gloss varnish and then I wanted to increase the depth look by applying wood glue on top of that. Unfortunately, my wood glue didn't cure 100% transparent and it left a little milky look at spots where it was too thick. Afterwards I used Green Stuff Splash Gel for the first time, which is a thick gel that dries completely transparent and lets you create waves. And I also used it to imitate water coming out of this pipe by gluing a transparent fishing line into the pipe and onto the base and then putting the splash gel on top of that. But I did have to repeat this step three times to get the proper effect that was not too thin. Another round of gloss varnish because that can never hurt. Then I glued together the base parts with 5 mm epoxy. And lastly I tried to imitate some foam at the spots where there wouldn't be any water current. For that I used Green Stuff's snow powder that I colored with camouflage green, but that was a bit too bright so I toned it down with model color ivory. And with that the base was done. 
For Venom's body I used a gloss black rattle can, however I think painting the body with a brush and Vallejo gloss black primer would have been easier. When I took grey primer as a base color for the symbol, the primer didn't really hold onto the gloss black. What I did, which helped a little, was to soak a q-tip with alcohol and go along the symbol. The alcohol dissolves the paint just a little bit and makes the surface rougher, just enough for the paint to stick to the surface better once the alcohol has evaporated. When the symbol was base coated with grey primer I used dead white next. You don't really need to be too careful painting the white symbol. If you mess up a line you can later easily correct that with the black gloss primer. And since Venom is standing in a sewer, a perfectly white symbol wouldn't make any sense in my opinion, so I weathered it with a mix of mahogany and filthy brown. Removing the excess with a q-tip or the brush that I dipped in water before. His fingernails were also weathered with mahogany and the weathering removed from the tips with a q-tip. As a last step for the body, I went in with black pastel powder to darken the recesses of the Venom symbol. That tickles. Yeah, we're done with the body now. For Venom's head, I first sprayed the eyes white with a rattle can, then I painted over that with a gloss black primer. When that was done, I started painting the gums with a red wash. But why it with a red wash ends up as too pinkish, so I mixed scarlet red with deep blue next. In between the layers, I quickly dry the paint by hitting it with a hairdryer for a few seconds. And after every major new color, I sealed it with matte varnish. Once I was happy with the gums color, I used bone white as a base color for the teeth. Then I used scrofulous brown for the tip of the teeth, blending the colors together with water. Then I used mahogany on top of that to further blend the colors together and to unify them. Man, I think we need to see a dentist. Hush. Next I used scarlet red again to paint along the teeth roots. And to finish the eyes I used black pastel along the corners for a nice shadow and a smoother transition between the black and white. Now for his tongue I used pale flash as a base color and then glued it into place with super glue. However that left a gap that I needed to fix with Tamiya Putty. After the pale flash I used hexed lichen as a wash for the tongue followed by gory red. Finishing up the paint job with a gloss varnish for the eyes and the mouth. But just gloss varnish wasn't truly enough, so I took green stuff UV resin to build up a thicker layer of saliva on the tongue and also over the teeth. For the teeth, it actually gives the extra benefit that they can't break off as easy anymore, since the resin fuses them together. But if you don't want to work with resin and a UV torch, you can also take Uhu all-purpose glue to imitate slime and saliva. Just put a drop at a time on a cardboard and use a toothpick or a paperclip to create strands and saliva. It worked best for me when the glue already started curing, which only takes a couple of seconds, then it creates those cool looking strands. And with that the head was done as well, and it was time to put him together for the final shots. Yeah, time is the right keyword, it's about time. 